No. I mean, ew. It just... It's so dirty. It's a pot of beets. I know, it's dirty even though I washed it earlier. It'll happen. I think my lens is dirty. Huh? Huh! <sighs> Fire in the hole. Okay. There. Well. <sighs> I guess we'll come back after they boil and <clears throat> we'll start pulling the skins off. Here. Seriously? You've had freckles your whole life and you just realized it. Well, well, yeah, because I was I was looking at my phone camera and I thought that right here was dirt. No. Freckles. Uh, the I'm, youth of I'm, America, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so, if you don't get the skin off of beets, they come out like really chewy and gross getting the skin off ain't hard though you just boil them a little bit we're just starting to come to a boil now i'll let it go for a little while and then kill the fire let it cool and the skins will slip right off it's boiling it looks like blood right <laughs> disclaimer i'm gonna use this on my hair not the beets portion but the water portion I'm going I'm to encapsulate it in a jar, I'm going to let it cool, and then I'm going to use it. Because you can use it to dye hair. So, yeah! Alright, so you see how the skins have started to blister? Now, all i got to do is... Ooh, shit, that's hot. Okay. Uh, I'll just show you. <laughs> because they're hot still. <clears throat> if you look, you can just wipe it off with your fingers. You know. Well, this is a thing. Yeah, these are peeled beets. He's all like, I'm trying to make sure one of us doesn't look like we committed a murder. That's too pink for blood. Like, that is too pink. <laughs> it still gets everywhere. <laughs> All right, looks like I gotta still gotta slip the rest of them. Oh, oh, really? This is the problem with trying to can beets when Katie's around. The smaller ones that she thinks <clears throat> I won't notice missing almost never make it into the jars. Okay, so this is why you boil them. All right, you got this skin here on the outside. You boil them for a few minutes, though, and it just literally just wipes right off. That kind of looks like human skin. No, it doesn't. It's too pink. Okay, on camera, it actually does look like blood, though. Look at this. Uh, but you just, it just peels right off nice and easy. Give it a quick wipe. Rich Wind up with a nice smooth beat. Yeah. Like those. Even where the top's coming out and the root, they just wipe right off. Yep. For the root, just a little pinch, pull, twist, slide the skin off, wipe the top off with your oh, thumb. Yeah. Turn my side pink. Huh? You baboon! Fix your camera. It's pointed at the. It's pointed at your hands. Oh, okay. Is it, I'm getting into hands video videos now, ain't I? Toes. <laughs> oh, do you like my toesies? Legacy you've gotten over your fear of foot fetishists. Are my, are my teeth red? You look like you stole a beat, yes. <laughs> Told you. It looks so spooky. <clears throat> hey, spooky. Alrighty. 
love how I just go. So I've only got a couple of these left to slip. And then uh, I'm obviously going to go wash my hands. With the hose first. You are not touching that doorknob. And then oh, I'll uh, and then. start getting ready for the next couple steps here. Okay. Bye. You probably noticed that uh, I got some different canning equipment out today. And I figured it's a good opportunity to at least touch on the differences between canning low acid food and canning high acid food. Now, anytime you're pickling something, you're adding vinegar to it most of the time. I mean, there's other ways you can do it where you just let it sit and ferment in its own juices, which is also really yummy. I'm hoping to get the opportunity to try that this year, possibly next. But in this case, unlike when we're canning meats, potatoes, low acid foods, um, these beets, when they go into the jars, are going to be swimming in a bath that's mostly vinegar. That's going to take care of all of our preservative function. The only downside to that is, well, and there's an upside and a downside to it. Upside is, this is a great thing if you're still kind of, yeah, about running a pressure cooker. But the downside is, there's an extra step. Yes, I have, I am cooking a pot full of empty jars. <coughs> what we're doing today with these beets is called water bath canning, or boiling water canning. Since there's acid in the food from the vinegar, then we don't have to pressure can it for it to be shelf stable. We can get away with just cooking it, well not even really cooking it, we're just going to put the jars in a big old pot of boiling water completely covered and then boil them for however long my recipe says, I think, I think it's like half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, upside to that, I'm not going to have a pressure vessel sitting here screaming away on my post porch. Do not ever, however, attempt to do this type of canning process with anything that does not have a hefty amount of acid in it. You can really make yourself sick. Emotional support beat? Mm -hmm. Alright. You so, made me lock my emotional support animal in the kennel. Well, it's not my fault he won't stop jumping around. Okay, so, what are you making? Beet brine. Okay, what's in beet brine? Well, since we're making a double batch, it's two cups water, two cups vinegar, that's and other things that you're going to read off to me. That's actually four cups each of water and vinegar. Okay. You're, 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 you're talking the basic recipe. You're not doubling it. All right, hold on. All righty. So, we got our kettle here ready to go. All right, two cups of sugar. But you put these in first. Well, doesn't matter. Okay, put your liquids in. Two cups each, water and vinegar, twice, because this is a double batch. And for those of you that... If you put uh, it in at once together, it makes it in for you. Yeah, and for those of you that ain't in high school yet, a standard pint mason jar is two cups. So for your liquids, go ahead and cheat. Struggling with the bag of sugar. Shut up. <laughs> All right, that's four cups too. One. I know how to count. Yeah, I know. I'm a that, hey, fill that cup. Okay, there we go. Two. 
three. That's your last one. Four. Half a bag of sugar. <laughs> or just, ladies and gentlemen, or if you want to do it quickly, dump it half a bag of sugar. Don't listen to her. She cuts corners all the time and shit gets weird. Okay. Also, just so you know, beets while they're raw won't harm you. Hey, uh, come on. Finish Stop. making the brine. All right. Now, you need two teaspoons of cloves. Once again, folks, we're doubling the recipe here, so... And you, unfortunately, if you don't have a scale, you got to kind of eyeball everything. Um, the book that this recipe is, the canning book that this recipe is actually from. Yeah, see that? It's hydrophobic. Okay, fine. I got clothes on. The rest of the book that this is actually from, to the best of my knowledge, has been out of print for several decades now, but you can go ahead and try to rustle up a copy if you want. It's the okay. uh, Allspice is do, 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 do. another teaspoon or two more teaspoons, I mean. Doesn't that just equal a tablespoon? Just do it. Two teaspoons. Just do two teaspoons. But it equals a tablespoon. Anyway. Now this stuff is really hydrophobic as you can see. It's like cinnamon, it just sits on top of the water. Yeah, for some reason lately she's obsessed with hydro hydrophobic stuff. I mean, I'm almost saying it's just because she learned a new word and wants to use the hell out of it. I'm gonna beat you with this cinnamon if you don't stop going to acclimatizations. Words, they're hard. So, <laughs> hate you. I don't actually hate them. I hate you though. Hope you choke on a cheese stick. We don't have any cheese sticks. Wait till I buy cheese sticks. And then two tablespoons of cinnamon. You didn't learn your lesson last time? Got cinnamon in it up my nose. Don't snort spices. Tablespoon, right? Tablespoon. Two of them. Kinda wanna do the cinnamon challenge. <sighs> no. I mean, it's gonna go to YouTube. No. <laughs> that is so 2016. One more. And then uh, you can bring anything out to stir it with. That was ridiculous. Okay. All right. Put everything back on the thing. I'm stirring. Okay. Now we're just getting everything. Y'all just got munched. Now we're just getting everything stirred together. And uh, we're going to let that come to a boil and then we're going to dump the beef in and boil everything for a few minutes and then let it stand while we finish setting everything up. Okay. So this is the part where it gets a little sketchy. You got to be kind of careful because you got hot syrupy brine in there. So we're going to very carefully add our beets. Oh, that was hot. There. Oh, missed a couple. Oh, that smells good. I really wish there was such a thing as smell -o vision on YouTube. Okay. Now we just let that come to a boil. And then we'll uh, do my little let it rest trick. And then jar them up. Basic supplies of a canning YouTuber barbecue grill with a cutting board on it for a countertop because it's too hot to work in the house, ladle, jar funnel, lid lifter, jar lifter, knockoff Chinese GoPro sitting on top of a can of cloves, and a random bowl. If you hear the squeaking, it's because Toby. Here, I don't need a random bowl. Oh no, it's not a random bowl, it's what I look for in the vinegar. Oh, excuse me, it's a specific bowl. 
either way, I don't need it. Yeah. Okay, my jars are boiled long enough now that they're nice and sterile. Let's get some stuff I don't need out of my way here. Okay, I have my pot of beets in the brine. Set them right here. That's them right there. All right. Now, at this stage, you got to be really careful because this pot is still boiling. All I did was turn the heat off. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my jars out. Grab the jar lifter. Dump the water out. Gonna try and kind of guesstimate how many jars I need because the ones that are gonna wind up the extra ones are gonna stay in the pot to take up space while I'm doing the actual canning <sighs> there's four we'll start with that okay Take our jar funnel, put it in the jar, and then come to our pot and just scoop up a ladle full of beets and brine and just go until the jar is full. And Katie did a really crappy job slicing those beets. So, we're going to have some weirdness with that jar. Alright, that one's good to go and very hot. I really need to stop grabbing hot things with my bare hands. I swear, today is one of those days where I just don't have a lick of sense. Life of a horse. I do have about 25 bajillion different things on my mind today. All while trying to get the basic stuff done. Got a little carried away there. You can definitely tell I haven't filled cards in a while. A lot of practice. And to kind of kick start the process of getting everything preserved and make sure that uh, these pickles wind up having a good flavor. Part of the brining process actually, I actually boil the beets in the brine for about 10 minutes or so. And then I let them sit and soak while I'm getting everything else ready. It's a little trick that I picked up years ago when I was doing this and I don't remember what, but something distracted me. And I wound up having to step away for a little bit after I got done doing my boil and I didn't come back to it for oh must have been half an hour 45 minutes maybe even an hour and uh, a few months later when I popped open one of those jars of beets to have a snack I was like oh hell yeah because they had way more flavor to them than they usually do now something else to think about too you probably figured out by now that 
I am not in the house in my kitchen. I am doing this outside on my porch for a couple of reasons. One, if you can't tell, it is an absolutely gorgeous afternoon. Like, why the hell would anybody want to be inside today? But also, it's the 19th of July. And I live in the Pacific Northwest. It gets very warm. Well, not very warm. Average high this summer has only been mid 80s to the low 90s. And I'll tell you right now, the forecasts get that completely wrong. Um, yeah, it's just plain, and this is hot work, especially if you're doing it inside. I mean, I'm outside on my porch, mostly in the shade. Got a nice breeze, and I am still sitting here having to be careful not to sweat into the pickle jars. <laughs> Some of you are probably already thinking, wait, mid-July and he's already canning beets? How the heck did he do that? Well, here's the thing. This isn't my actual beet harvest. Um, beets, like a lot of other root crops, you know, um, carrots, onions, a few other things that I can't think of off the top of my head, they need to be thinned at some point in the growing process when you thin them, what you do is you actually pull some of them out early when they're a little bit on the small side so that the remainder have more time to have more space to grow. It gives you a bigger vegetable at the end of your growing season. Um, so today, we thinned some of the beets, and I'm one of those guys that's like, okay, could thin them early, and then it's done, but you're just pulling out little toothpick-sized stuff, and there's not really anything to it, so it's just going to wind up going in the compost. Instead of doing that, just get them in the ground a little bit earlier so that when you hit this time of the year season you know mid to late July and it's time to thin them they've actually got some decent size to them holy smokes okay I am not about to leave that last one behind. Can we wiggle and jiggle and come on, we can do this. There's always room for one more. Oh, look at that, look at that. Okay. And it's, almost, and it's also looking like I made just enough brine. Get out of here, Mr. Bumblebee. I do not need your help. That's the downside to working outside. Especially when you're working with something that's very sugary. There we are. Okay. So, I need two, four, six, eight lids. And eight rings. All right. I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to holler at Katie tell her what I need for lids. Okay. Last step before we go in the pot. All I got left to do now is get the lids and rings on. Preferably one at a time. You guys get to watch me burn the crap out of my fingers. Not sure if, once again, 
because I'm water bath canning today, I have to pre-sterilize everything, including my lids and my rings. Generally speaking, when I'm pressure canning, I only boil my lids because the pressure cooker reaches high enough temperatures that there's no need <clears throat> to sterilize the rings or the jars for that matter. It's one of those things where, you know, let your conscience be your guide. I believe the FDA recommends sterilizing everything regardless. However, I store my jars after they've been used. I wash them, of course, before they get put away. And I store them in such a way that there's really no way for anything nasty to get on them. So, I usually get a, just wash them in hot water real quick and then get to work. <sighs> And either I double-lidded one of these jars, or Katie can't count. Great. Nope. Ah, phew, thank goodness. Ah, come on, oh, that hasn't happened in a while. Got it. Sometimes, ooh, hot water, hot water, owie! Sometimes, when you're boiling your lids, two of them will jiggle around just right, get one on top of the other, and as soon as you pull them out of the water, they'll vacuum down together. It can be kind of hard to get apart, as you just saw. Ooh, hot. Still hot. Hotter. <sighs> Owie! I'm gonna be crying like a freaking baby by the time we're done with this. God damn it. I have that or cuss so much that this video will never qualify for monetization even when I do get enough watch time and subscribers to qualify. Yeesh! Damn it. Whew. By the way, if you're the type of person that likes watching, ow, bah, likes watching big dumb country boys hurt themselves doing simple things, how about a, subs how about a subscribe? Why not? You know? Don't cost nothing. And you never know what me and that kid of mine are going to get up to next. Alrighty. So, I've got all the lids and rings on. Rings snug down, not too tight, but tight enough that nothing's going to leak out. And right at this moment, Everything's going back into the big black kettle. And I'm using another old trick of mine. I didn't dump the hot water that I used to uh, boil my jars to sterilize them out. I just left it in there. All right. So, some of y'all are probably already wondering, why are there still two empty jars in there? Well, if you recall, when I first started getting everything jarred up, when I was taking them out, I mentioned the extras are going to stay in there to keep everything from rattling around. That's what's going on there.
And the idea behind using the same boiling water is it's already pretty hot. I'm not going to have to wait as long to get it to uh, come to a boil. Now what I'm doing now is pulling up the Facebook message I got from my mother earlier. Does this say 10 minutes or 90 minutes? Oh, here we go. Boiling water bath for 25 minutes. So, now I'm going to stop you right there. You're probably thinking, oh, 25 minutes? That's not bad. It's almost done. That's 25 minutes from the time they start boiling. So, I'm going to set a timer on my phone so it's ready to go. Okay, but I'm not going to start it. I'm going to light my burner. And I'm going to wait to start that timer until my water comes back to a boil. That's, that's something that they don't tell you in the canning cookbooks. Okay, they'll give you the, per they'll give you the cook time for everything. All your ingredients and stuff. But when they tell you the cook time, they leave out that that's how long your product has to be boiling. It's not just how long you need to have the burner going. What the hell is up with this little knockoff GoPro? Wonder if the battery went dead. Oh well. So, that's it. Once that starts boiling, I'm going to set my timer. I'm going to let it boil for 25 minutes. Then I'm going to kill my heat, pull my jars out, and let them sit and cool until they all seal. So, yeah. That's how you can, that's how you can pickled beets. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.